Okay, uh, here we are for uh, the next part of the session, which is activity three, and it would be uh, creating a, a query. Uh, we're still going to use the original one, which we created in a dynamic to, to be able to get the user in, um, like requirements for what state. We're going to use that same query, but this time we're going to actually create a query which will show us information about um, you know, date range, like um, a set of records within. Um, between two dates, so within dates. So what, what we want to do is download this, um, uh, the, <coughs> well, if you've already downloaded it, open uh, 2.3. Uh, so I'm just going to show you here. Um, here's my um, file, <coughs> and we're going to use uh, 2-3. So I'm going to open that. And here's my, my file. Uh, open and once again, I'll, I'll remind you to enable enable content. Now, <clears throat> if you actually see here that we've got the previous um, the, the previous queries which we created in the last like the simple query and then the dynamic query. But what what I want to do is actually make a copy of this guy, uh, the states states um, dynamic query. And the easiest way of doing that is either a control control C or so. But I'm just going to do control. Copy, <coughs> cancel that, get rid of this, yep, and paste it. So control V. Right? And as I'm as I'm pasting it, it gives me a new name to, to assign. But as we know in the exercise, if we go down here, um, the exercise requires us to call it list of clients for a date range, right? So I'm just gonna paste that there. Right. So my new um, <coughs> query will have that name there, and this this is if we if we run it, it'll ask me pre like previously, and I would have to enter a, a value to get the vic and so forth. But just to show you, you can also just go directly right click to designing on on that um, query. Now what <coughs> what we want to do is we want to add the invoices as well. So we've got our dynamic down here with the square brackets, which creates the, di um, the dialogue for us. But we want to add the invoice table. So if I go invoice, <coughs> I want to add tables, and I'm going to pick invoice. So I'm just going to drag the invoice across, and you notice it's already picked that this this. Um, um, these tables are actually in a relationship of one to many, right? so a client has many um, invoices. And you notice there's a there's a link between the primary key to the foreign key and the foreign key. So the primary key becomes a foreign key on the many side of the relationship. Okay. So <coughs> here, what we want to do is uh, we want to add the invoice sent item. Right. So I'm just going to add that. As it says in the instructions, right? Um, so in design, uh, design view, add that item. Now, for if I just slip, switch over to the exercise. So for the exercise, you can see that um, we've been asked to to put in a criteria uh, which runs between dates, and access provides provides us with a special command saying between, which we say here, between, and <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to create, you notice the square brackets here, uh, two dialogues, so in other words, one date entry, the first first date entry will be prompt, will be a prompt, and then another square brackets, which means we're going to effectively in this criteria, we're going to have two dialogues being prompted uh, <coughs> for us to enter data. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do is just copy that, and I'm going to paste it into my database. So down here in the criteria, criteria field for sent, I will paste my. If I double click here, yep, no, it's not done. It. Let's go further across. There we go. It should go even further. It doesn't do it. Okay, anyway, let's push this across. So now I can see that my between command will actually have two dialog boxes. This first one prompting for the first date and uh, for the second date. Right. Okay. 
this is moving across a little bit. Can I move it across a bit? No, that won't allow me. All right, doesn't matter. But uh, now, uh, save. And if I run it, I can put in the first criteria, which was uh, what state. So let's just do Vic. And now I'll be prompted, and you notice here, the between is the first date. So the, the text between the square brackets is asking me for a particular date. Uh, what were what were the dates? <coughs> if you have a look in your um, in in your exercise, uh, like if I just switch over to the exercise window, you'll actually see here that the first date will be first of June. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to paste that <coughs> in a second. So first of June to the thirtieth of June, right uh, down the bottom here. Okay, so <coughs> let's just go back to the main window. And so I'm going to paste the 1st of June, and you notice the way I've put the dates in, right? It's it's giving me an example of the dates here, so I can use uh, three month, oh sorry, three uh, three characters for the month, but always put in the year with four digits, right? So <coughs> please don't put in. Um, I'll, I'll show you in the next example, uh, next example, but don't use two digit dates for year because it confuses the system a bit, right? So I'll say OK. And now the second prompt, which is the AND, right? The second prompt is asking you for the second date. And I know it was supposed to be 30th of June, right? <coughs> 2019, right? So if I put in 19, and I had <coughs> 19 here, and in the first date was 19, the system starts getting confused about what the dates are, the date format is. So if my my operating system is um, <coughs> set to uh, Japanese or American and so forth. Well, American is uh, month is first day. So in America, um, <coughs> if I had if I had here three, right? In America, it would mean March, and then the sixth of March, and then if I actually just left <coughs> nineteen, it would say nineteen was the year, right? So. <coughs> If I use uh, date entry like, for instance, what I've just entered, um, depending on your operating system setup, it may interpret the date in an incorrect fashion. Right? So that's why it's a good idea to always have four four digit uh, year year dates. And <coughs> you can see here that now it, it can't really make a mistake because uh, it'll be you can't have 30 months, right? So it'll be interpreted as the 30th of June 2009. Right? And there we go. So from the 2nd of June, and it'll keep going all the way along. So all these records, the VIC records, so the return comes back with the, all the records which are VIC. And then the secondary test is to, to see are those records that have been returned between or between the dates that we actually set. So here's my return. Okay. Now let's just have a look at the exercise. And as you can see, we've actually completed the exercise for for this session. Right? Uh, replay if you need to. Right? 